it's time to explore buttonholes on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Brilliance 80. Now you can always use the sewing advisor if you're not sure which of the buttonholes to select for the different types of fabric. So you can always come in and say, I'm working on a woven heavy fabric and touch buttonhole, and it will make sure to pick the buttonhole that is right for that fabric. So that's a great way to do it. If you're just looking to see all the different buttonholes that you have, go to the menu A and scroll all the way up. The buttonholes are going to start at stitch number 30 and there's all different styles. So if you touch the question mark and then touch a buttonhole, it'll describe what it is and what it's used for and the fabric that it's designed to be used on. So there's lots of different ones, but I want to show you how we measure the buttonhole how we put the foot on for the automatic one. And then also, let's talk about if you wanted to do a manual buttonhole. So we're gonna do all of these through this video. So make sure you watch it all the way to the end. And then in the next video, we'll show you how to sew the buttons on. And that's with stitch number 41. That's a built-in stitch and it's wonderful. It just makes it so it stitches right into those holes perfectly. So first of all, you do have your automatic buttonhole foot. And before I actually put it on, I want to show you a little something on this red wheel that is important. So as you turn the red wheel the other way, yes, you are looking for the two little white marks to line up with the white line. That way, when it starts, it will know how far it's traveled so you get the exact length of buttonhole on the left and right side. If that mark is not connected with the white line when it starts, you'll get a little pop-up message to remind you that that is the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this one first and then we'll switch over to the uh, manual one, which again, you can make a buttonhole that's seven inches long if you want. So there is benefits for both of them. Next, you will find that there is a plug-in on the back of the machine. So usually I like to put my foot on first and then reach behind the machine and plug it in. When it's completely plugged in correctly, you're gonna get a new area. Let me go ahead and pick a buttonhole number 30. This new area will be a measuring area. The measuring area will allow you to take your button, put it along the lower part of your machine where it starts at zero with the small millimeters. And do you notice there's a dotted circle? The dotted circle is where you put the button. So line that up and I'm looking at approximately 16 millimeters. So I can go ahead and change it from, it looks like default comes in at 14. That's just a nice middle range. And then I can put it to the length that I want. You can also change the density of the buttonhole. That's what the little white toggle switch is for. So if you want your stitches to be closer together because you're using a thinner thread, just note that you can adjust that as well. And like any time, you are gonna wanna always test your buttonhole on the fabric with the right stabilizer that uh, you're gonna be doing the actual buttonhole on. Now, we think of buttonholes and we think of garments. So there's a lot more uses for buttonholes these days other than just on garments garments and we think about them like for anything that a, a cord, a drawstring, drawstring pants, a drawstring bag, even these buttonholes right here on our uh, Viking Stitching Cosmos course, we actually stitched some, look at that variegated thread because we were making them decorative and then we wove ribbon through the holes. So uh, one way to decorate and embellish using buttonholes. So you could try out all the different styles to find the buttonhole that would be the most fun. Um, even if you were doing something in the bathroom where the shower curtain's gonna connect through those little rings, you could do buttonholes all the way across the top edge and then hook those in and you could have a decorative fabric liner or uh, outside edge. All right, the next thing to talk about is where the buttonholes start. So you're gonna notice there is a black dot on the stitch indicating its starting point, and then there's a white arrow pointing north. So that means that when I start, if I start right here, I'm gonna be off the fabric very quickly. So do keep in mind that as we start, we need to start on fabric so it can travel up and be on fabric. Uh, make sure, so once you slide this in, that's when I actually adjust the little 
red wheel to be the mar along the white mark of the foot. And you can go ahead and stitch. Once this is stitching, I mean, it's doing the whole thing for you. So if you do want to use the start stop button, you definitely can do that. I want to show you that it actually stitches a straight line back, then returns with the satin stitch, straight line back, the bar tack at the top, and then the satin stitch down the right side. Bar tack at the bottom, little extra locking stitches, and then just touch the scissor button to cut your thread. So again, every buttonhole, every fabric is a little bit different. Actually, that's, isn't that beautiful? Now, one thing I do have to give credit to Husqvarna Viking for doing is having the stitching go back and then stitching the satin stitch forward. The reason for it is because then both of those satin stitches look the same on both sides, nice and balanced. If you've ever had a, a machine in the past where this buttonhole stitches down and then crosses over and then stitches back, you do always notice that both the legs have a little different look. The twist of the thread is a little different. By them both coming towards you, it actually is, um, huh. They're just beautiful. All right, so depending on what you're stitching, you can also use the little marks on the foot for guidance. So if you know you need to start, for example, five eighths of an inch in, you can use one of these marks along the edge of your front fabric and then know exactly where you're starting. So all you have to do is have them like spaced evenly and the foot will be your starting point. Lots of different kinds. There are uh, keyhole buttonholes here. Let's just do one of those real quick. I'll leave it at the default se setting. It comes up as 17 millimeters long. I'm gonna realign that little mark and the foot and then I'm gonna just push the start button. So this is gonna also kind of travel back, travel forward. I don't know why I feel like I should hold it, but I always feel that need as I go. The key hole at the bottom and then the stitching to complete it all the way around. So try out all your buttonholes. You definitely can see the difference. And then again, you can use the scissors at the end to cut. All right, so super fun. Keyhole buttonholes are designed so if you have a shanked button, that's what those are for. Now, so let's talk about the manual buttonhole. When your machine does not have the uh, foot plugged in, it cannot be told how long of a button you are doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to a standard um, style of buttonhole. I'm picking stitch number 30. But this time there is a reverse button that comes on the machine. So that might mean I might wanna have a starting point and an ending point that I'm shooting for when I start. So I'm gonna lower the presser foot, see if I'm close, lift it up, move it around. And then I'm gonna push, um, actually I'm gonna use my foot control because I'm in charge of finding where the end is. This one will stitch away from us. As I see the line come into view, there it is, I'll touch the reverse button. On the screen, you'll see what it's going to be doing next, and but it doesn't know when to start. So that's why you could make a really long buttonhole with the manual buttonhole foot. See? Um, because you just keep stitching until you have the length that you're actually wanting. But as I get close to where I started, there, I will stop the machine, touch the reverse button, this is gonna do that tack at the end, the locking stitch, and then it stops. It actually stopped with my foot on the foot control. So it will stop for you. It knows the right amount of stitches to take. I cut the thread, and now that is the buttonhole. And again, any size you want, but you'll have control. Another reason to use the manual buttonhole foot would be for uh, if you had to mend a buttonhole. So you could actually cycle through and just like mend one side of it or mend the top or bottom. You can actually find the part you need to actual stitch, skip over the parts you don't need to stitch and really get in and have a buttonhole on demand at the step you need to start on. So try out all your buttonholes. And again, if you wanna ch check out our Stitching Cosmos online course, you will learn other things that you can do with this machine, like what we did when we turned buttonholes into something more decorative than, the, than they were originally supposed to be.